Elimination reactions involve the loss of two groups, X and Y, from a substrate with simultaneous formation of a pi bond. Usually, Y is a hydrogen atom, and as you see here, Z can be carbon, nitrogen, or oxygen. In this series of videos, we'll focus on the example where Z is carbon. In this context, elimination is an important method for forming pi bonds, and it's also a commonly observed alternative to substitution chemistry. In other words, we may mix seemingly appropriate substrates together, expecting substitution products, but end up with elimination products instead. Let's look first at the essential ingredients of any elimination reaction. Like substrates involved in substitution reactions, elimination substrates must contain a leaving group, which I've labeled here in blue as Y. In addition, there must be an alpha hydrogen present. We call this hydrogen in red an alpha hydrogen because it is attached to a carbon that is adjacent to the atom attached to the leaving group, which I've labeled here as the electrophile. In many cases, a base is required to pull the alpha hydrogen off of the substrate. One thing that should jump out at you here is that the substrates for elimination look, in the abstract, almost identical to the substrates of substitution reactions. In fact, on these substrates, we can immediately envision an SN2 process where the base acts as a nucleophile. Substitution and elimination compete with each other. However, depending on the exact character of the starting materials, we may favor substitution over elimination, or vice versa. More on this later, but let's turn our attention now to the two most common elimination mechanisms, E2 and E1. As you might expect, the E2 notation parallels the notation for the SN2 reaction and implies that this mechanism is a one-step bimolecular process. The curved arrows of E2 involve simultaneous removal of the alpha proton, formation of the new double bond, and loss of the leaving group Y. It's very important to consider the transition state of the E2 reaction. Remember that the transition state is a configuration of atoms near the middle of the reaction coordinate where the reaction energy is at a maximum. Notice that in the E2 transition state, the bond to the alpha hydrogen in red and the bond to the leaving group in blue are parallel to each other but pointing in opposite directions. This arrangement of atoms is required for E2 elimination because the key electron flow involves overlap of the CH sigma bonding orbital with the CY sigma star antibonding orbital. Placing these bonds in an anti-periplanar arrangement, as you see here, optimizes this overlap. Be careful, as not all substrates can achieve this crucial arrangement of atoms. From this particular transition state, we would expect the trans double bond product because the two R groups are pointing in opposite directions in the transition state. Here we can see one is on a wedge coming towards us and one on a dash going away from us. Only strong bases cause the E2 elimination reaction to occur. The most common bases used are compounds that you're probably used to seeing already from substitution chemistry, NR2-, OR-, and CR3-. Let's look now at a few examples of E2 elimination. E2 will always require a strong base to proceed because the alpha hydrogen is not very acidic. It takes a really reactive pair of electrons to rip off a proton alpha to a leaving group. The electrophilic carbon atom needs to be primary or secondary because steric hindrance inhibits the reaction. Tertiary electrophiles are simply too crowded to participate in E2 reactions. You should keep in mind the concerted nature of E2 reactions and how the transition state influences the product stereochemistry. In this example, we can see that only the E product forms. This follows directly from the anti-periplanar nature of the transition state. Pause the video now and see if you can draw a transition state for this reaction that explains the stereochemistry of the product. The second example is a bit more complicated because the alpha hydrogen and leaving group are not drawn antiperiplanar to each other. In order to see why the Z product must form in this reaction, you'll have to rotate, either mentally or with the model kit, around the central bond to get the alpha hydrogen and tosylate groups parallel and pointing in opposite directions. Pause the video now and see if you can mentally perform that rotation. Here's the result. Notice that in this conformation, the H and OTS groups are anti-periplanar, and the two methyl groups are pointing in opposite directions. This methyl group and the ethyl group 
will end up cis. Finally, here's a deceptively simple example of E2. At first glance, it looks like one of the alpha hydrogens on the CH2 group is removed and Br leaves, forming a double bond. However, there are two important selectivity issues here. First of all, there are two sets of reactive alpha hydrogens. Either the methylene on the left or the methyl group on the right can react. Secondly, if the methylene reacts preferentially, we could end up with either the cis or trans product, depending on which hydrogen is removed. Let's look at this example in more detail to discuss selectivity issues in elimination reactions. Most of this discussion will be relevant to the E1 mechanism as well. Elimination reactions are controlled by the stability of the products. In other words, the most stable product will form in elimination reactions. There are two general principles you should keep in mind about the stability of compounds containing double bonds. First of all, double bonds substituted with more carbon atoms are more stable than those substituted with fewer carbon atoms. In the example here, you can see that this helps explain why the so-called terminal product, in which the double bond is on the end of the compound, is not favored. The double bond in this compound has only one bond to carbon. The internal double bond in the observed product, on the other hand, possesses two bonds to carbons. The second principle says that trans double bonds are more stable than cis double bonds. This explains why the cis product, in which the ethyl group and the methyl group are on the same side of the double bond, was not observed. Steric hindrance between the two cis groups leads to instability, which is avoided in the observed product. Use these two general principles to help you predict the products of elimination reactions. Both are important for E1 elimination as well.